we read everywhere that the best thing you can do for the young child is to breastfeed it. But at the same time, uh, deficiency is more common in breastfed kids. Why is that? And, you know, as a mother, what can you do to make sure that your infant is getting the nutrients it needs, including vitamin D? So vitamin D is very common uh, in pregnancy and in the immediate postpartum period, which is exactly the window when we're breastfeeding, okay? Mm -hmm. um, studies in Pittsburgh show that about uh, 50 to 60 percent, it depends on when they measured in the, in the, in the, in the pregnancy, um, but 50 to 60 percent of uh, European American women are deficient in the latter stages of pregnancy. Um, uh, and that 90 some odd percent, 90 plus percent of African American women are deficient in the latter stages of pregnancy. And then at confinement, at birth, the infants um, retain that deficiency. In other words, mm -hmm. some 90, 90 to 95 percent of African American newborns are vitamin D deficient uh, at birth. Um, uh, and about 50 to 60 percent of uh, Caucasian infants are vitamin D deficient at birth. Now, if this deficiency continues in the, next, in the ensuing months, which it typically does, then the mother's breast milk is going to contain very little vitamin D sure. as well. Um, uh, hence the recommendations by the American Academy of Pediatrics that you should fortify a breastfed infant with vitamin D. But a better solution is to kill two birds with one stone here and fortify the mom enough that the levels in her breast milk are normal, normal, mm -hmm. not typical, but normal, <laughs> okay? Um, uh, and then you're not only replenishing mom's low D levels, which will help her rec recuperate, if you will, from a pregnancy because a pregnancy can be very draining and she needs to put calcium back into her bones and things mm -hmm. in, the, in this recovery period, but will also enhance the vitamin D levels in her breast milk and, and provide enough for the infant. And Bruce Hollis, out of uh, um, uh, South Carolina, um, Medical College of South Carolina, two NIH grants. One was to look at the safety of high-dose vitamin D during pregnancy, and the other study was to look at high-dose supplementation in breastfeeding women and how much supplement would you need for enough to show up in the breast milk so that the vitamin D level in the infant was normal. Okay? First piece, 4,000 units a day throughout pregnancy. Um, nobody dropped out of the study because of complications or problems from being on that dose. Okay? And in fact, there seem to be fewer pregnancy complications in the, in the group getting vitamin mm. D, okay? okay? So it seems to be pretty benign during pregnancy, okay? And may actually reduce the risk of preeclampsia and some other mm. pregnancy complications. And that's been shown in other studies that there is a relationship um, uh, between preeclampsia and vitamin D deficiency. The lower your vitamin D level, the higher your risk of preeclampsia uh, as an outcome for your pregnancy. Then let's move to breastfeeding, the postpartum period. Um, Bruce Hollis found that um, at 4,000 units a day, um, there was a modest amount of D showing up in the breast milk, but the vitamin D levels in the infants did not quite reach normal. And that it took 6,000 units a day on average. I mean, he, he was just using set doses. Mm -hmm. um, I usually recommend you replace based on weight so that you target specific to each person rather than everybody get the same dose. Mm -hmm because size matters and bigger people need more and little people need less. But in this study, they just used a set dose. Um, they tried 4,000, they tried 6,000. 6,000, at 6,000 units a day, um, roughly, it, they, these women seemed to have adequate amounts in their, not only was their blood level normal, their blood levels were in the, in the high 40s, low mm -hmm. 50s, but there was enough now in, the, in their breast milk that the infant's uh, vitamin D level was normal breastfeeding okay. on those women. So. These are big numbers. I mean, most people say, well, I'll take 1,000 units a day. That's probably not scratching the surface. You need, um, uh, you need more than that to get your, your, mm. your level to normal. Um, uh, and, uh, and certainly when you're breastfeeding, because the amount that shows up in breast milk is, milk is only a fraction of what you have in your bloodstream, you, you need to have a, a level that's mm. well within the normal range for enough to be in, in the breast milk for the infant. But when the kids get a little bit older, um, we're always told to drink our milk when we're kids and, and vitamin D fortified milk. Is that a good way to get vitamin D for the kids that are in the three to older range? Uh, milk as a source of vitamin D is um, useful probably in the first two years of life. And that's even pushing it, okay? There's 100 units of vitamin D, supposed to be 100 units, and Michael Hollick did some studies saying that 
there's some quite, a quite a bit of variability from one manufacturer of milk to another as to how compliant they are mm. with this uh, FDA recommendation. But um, 100 units per 8-ounce glass of milk, okay? If the requirement for a, a, a child who's about a year old is 2 to 400 units a day, that's 2 to 4 8-ounce glasses of milk a day, okay? Um, uh, if the requirement for a three or five year old is closer to 800 units per day, that's eight glasses mm -hmm. of milk a day. And you can see where this is going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, for an adult, it's 20, 30 glasses of milk a day. There's just no way yeah. you can get enough milk. You'll make yourself sick, okay? Um, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of dairy um, because for a multitude of reasons. Number one, um, uh, it, uh, it raises insulin levels. Uh, number two, uh, it's, the, it's the most allergic food on the planet. And when you talk to a food allergist, they'll say, well, what's the number one food allergy? It's dairy. It's always dairy. It's always been dairy, mm -hmm. okay? Um, uh, and um, uh, it, it's loaded with carbohydrates and fat unless you're drinking fat free but if so you, so you drink fat free it's still loaded with carbohydrates there's a lot of simple sugar in there and the simple sugar plus the protein really shoot up insulin levels it's just not it's a food that was designed it's loaded with growth hormones it's loaded with sugar and protein and it was designed to to enhance insulin secretion in a newborn to facilitate growth it's baby food <laughs> it's for babies <laughs> and only for babies okay and cows don't put vitamin d in milk that's a requirement by, the, uh, by the, the USDA and the FDA that it be fortified with A and D to prevent rickets. And those policies mm -hmm. date way back, many decades back. Um, so milk, unpasteurized milk that has nothing added to it, certainly will do very little, if anything, uh, in the way of preventing rickets even, mm -hmm. okay? Because there's no D in, in unpasteurized raw milk. Um, uh, so. <clears throat> So D was a useful tool in its time. It's still a useful tool um, at a certain age range, but certainly as you approach the age of two, um, uh, uh, milk loses its uh, utility, rapidly loses mm -hmm. its utility. And then you need to think about supplementing these kids who are not getting enough sunshine, um, at the very least checking their level and seeing that they're not, making sure they're not deficient. Um, and if they are, then, then, then either fortifying their diet or, or giving them a supplement, doing something to, um, uh, to correct that deficiency.